energy which is required everywhere. Before that, I thought I should uh, pay my tributes to Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, who was here in this stage for the series of talks he arranged to take to make India my dream, how India my dream India should look like. So this is where he was sitting, and I was there as the president of Hyderabad Management Association, and uh, he shared his thoughts about how India should grow for the next uh, century. You can see. See, he was uh, my guru, my mentor, my advisor. Everything he was there, my leader, except he was not my boss. And uh, so he won't like to in, me to introduce to anybody calling my boss. And uh, I worked with him for nearly three decades. And uh, he, I was working for various missile systems, as you have heard, fighter aircraft, tanks, etc., for almost three decades. Then what happened, he was there as the president of India. Then he said, uh, one day you will come and meet me. I want to tell you something interesting. So I went and uh, met him after doing so many things on different systems and solutions. When I met him, and uh, he said, uh, meet one Mr. Dr. Srinivasan from Baba Atomic Research Center. I was surprised. Why is he asking me to meet the Baba Atomic Research Center? Then, uh, no, no, I know you don't get confused. See, you have been doing missiles, bombs, and tanks, and uh, things like that. All are destructive, you know. So do something for a common man, for the future, which is good, safe, and useful to the society. Then I remembered that when he was here in Hyderabad, he developed the stent, the first stent cardiology here in Hyderabad with Dr. Somaraju using the material that what we were doing for the missiles, like Agni and Akash and things like that. There also he had told that we should do something for society other, other than what we are doing for the defense services. So I said, okay, sir, I will do it. Then what happened? I met Dr. Srinivasan in Bark, and he was continuously with me to do the energy research, how to do it. Then I went through various literature because I had nothing about, uh, know nothing about energy research, all doing all missiles and tanks. Then uh, I found out that uh, there's a lot of history of 35 years where people are looking at how to handle energy for future. See, the atomic energy is not very safe. Worried, people are worried about uh, fission. Then the fossil fuels are everyday problem. We are shown that uh, it will give you green gas problem, global warming taking place, fossil fuels are vanishing. How do you have energy for next generation, future generation? Then sun and uh, wind energy also are not totally green, but they are also having limitations and constraints and may not meet the full requirements. So what next? So in 35 years I have been watching that uh, some people are working on what is known as the cold fusion. See, on the surface of the sun, there is a continuously energy, heat being generated for millions of years using hot fusion. There is a very high temperature, millions of degrees, sun is generating heat continuously without any end. Can we replicate here? So there is a school of thought called hot fusion, we are all aware. People are trying to work on hot fusion, which trying to emulate what is happening in the sun at millions of degrees centigrade. Can we do at a lower temperature, say 1000 degrees? That is the challenge given to me. Then we have built a team and I found out that uh, there are about 1000 scientists working in the world to handle that what you call as a cold fusion. Instead of a hot fusion, it is called cold fusion. If it is a cold fusion, how do we handle it? So, to some extent, some people have seen results and it's good, reasonably good results, at, but very inconsistent, not replicable, and also it is being questioned by peer scientists, 
saying that no, no, it may not be correct. There may be some problem, error in uh, in instrumentation, modeling like that. But then I took a challenge. I said we formed a team first in Pune, then in Bangalore, Hyderabad. We worked for seven years, maybe 300, 400 experiments, trying to understand how to simulate that low temperature fusion. But nothing happened. We give 100 watts, you get output of only 90 watts, 80 watts, never crossing 100. So that's called coefficient of performance, which is more than one. But we are getting less than one. For seven years, we did not get. Then what happened? The COVID team came, COVID area, the time, and uh, we we were not able to go to work. And then we had some time. Then fortunately, we had a team to work uh, even on the COVID days, and we found a solution, a combination of materials, mechanisms, modeling, how to see that the coefficient become more than one. So we got a breakthrough. and then the performance was 1.1 that is 100 watts you go 110 watts coming out as a heat so this is one of the experimental setup i shown where we are using a air calorimeter to measure the because what getting a higher power than what you put input suppose you put 100 watts you get 110 watts it's a miracle as per the physics laws of physics it can't happen but it is happening because of the By the activity of the atoms inside that, so we have a reactor, or you call it a device, which uses hydrogen, gas, and metals like nickel and palladium, no nuclear materials, commonly available materials, and then you design the experiment. You give an atmosphere within the device such so that the hydrogen atoms are attracted. to combine into helium over two or three step processes and it gives out heat so then you measure the heat because people who were working in the field they want to know have you have measured it so you measure the input you can measure using all the instrumentation output heat measured we are using air calorimeter later you can have a radiation mode measure we showed it 1.1 1.2 so that is a good breakthrough then we found that many countries are claiming similar result so we want to demonstrate to them how we are able to show our results which was continuously giving out outer higher output than input so 100 watts you give 150 watts 130 watts today we are almost touching coefficient of performance of 2 that is nearly two times and what is unique in uh, in india because in india we are the only team working on cold fusion and uh, the work is going on in usa in china and also in japan very high uh, maybe about 200 entities or and institutions industries are working continuously our unique uh, achievement in addition to getting a cop of nearly 2 is that we have kept the units i have shown the two units there on the screen the left side and the right side and we kept it on for nearly one year for one year it is generating excess heat continuously day and night on a 24/7 basis and it is a sealed device what you see in the screen is a sealed device we have filled hydrogen put the so called catalysts and also the conducive atmosphere inside so with that combination is a continuously generating excess heat for nearly one year which is a very unique achievement in the in the scientific community in the world itself and i presented this recently in poland there is a conference every year on this cold fusion i presented this and it was a big news to the people because they were not aware of the work going on in india it's going on in japan number of universities in china and usa but it is going on here they are surprised then many people are coming forward to show it now we are seen here show two devices on the left side on the right side both contain same material 
also same dimension, same hydrogen field, same temperature, as sealed completely. Instrumentation also provided the same. The left side one without the fuel. Fuel means the catalyst and also the coating. So the catalyst coating, left side I don't put, right side I put. The coating is weighing about 2 milligrams, that's all. So the, with the 2 milligrams coating uh, material with, with nickel and palladium on the right side, and that material not there in the left side, we see that right side is generating excess heat continuously. And we have invited experts from Atomic Energy Department, from IAC, IATs, from defense or the DRDO scientists to come and see and tell us what is that we can do better. So I'm happy that uh, this performance has been appreciated by all. Then uh, the Department of Science and Technology said, please go to market now. Now that you have made a your result, proof of concept, and also you have made a device, why don't you go to proof of, go to market and try to see it used for a common man what I promised to Dr. Abdul Kalam. So, for a, how do we use it? See, as I see that anything you want to do work, whether education or instrument, or uh, say, even for home cooking, or industrial application, or space application, or defense application, for example, we have uh, people deployed in the, for the defense in the northeast area. They want heat to be generated. So wherever you want to use, you require energy, why not we give this as the energy available for the next century? For the next century, energy should be available to all the people. Like that, we are working on it, and uh, we are touched the coefficient of two, continuously working, and is using the materials available within the country. The design is ours, patent is ours, and no nuclear radiation and no hazardous emissions or radiation. Safe. So it is safe, it is modular, it is portable, and also it is produced, man manufactured in India. The advantage is, suppose you want to see, we know that uh, there are power stations generating thousands of megawatts of energy. So there is one model of a centralized energy generation. Why not a decentralized and also so miniature type of energy generators, but integrate the output. So this is one model. It's a centralized, distributed, decentralized. So if you have energy devices, smaller, it will be a microgrid, commonly usable in village level, taluk level, and distributed safely within the country. So this is what we have done, and this is the model we are thinking, energy for uh, next century, for the future generation. We have a team about uh, working here in Hyderabad, and uh, we have been getting results, and uh, many investors have come forward to support our activities, and uh, I'm sure that we are going to give a solution for the future, maybe next 100 years. See, one more thing we have to appreciate is, Whatever you think, whether you take microwaves, you take TV, you take a mobile, you take anything you take, or airplane, it takes one or two decades for it to become really a mature technology, usable for a common man. So this also will mature within next 10, 15 years into a, a dominant, game-changing, revolutionary energy available to anybody at affordable cost and price within the country. So this is what we think we are going to give a solution to the country. Thank Dr. Abdul Kalam who introduced me to this field of energy. Otherwise I was not in the field of energy as you know. <laughs> so I thank him for that. And uh, I hope our future generation will all be beneficial for our children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren for the next uh, few generations. And it's a nice opportunity for us to share such a thing happening within the country and support it wholeheartedly. Thank you very much.